Hey guys and welcome back to Now I Know. Today we are talking about one of the most requested topic and that is ABO and RH blood group system. We'll start with ABO and then we will see the RH blood group system. Now, now when it comes to uh, ABO and RH blood group system, we'll all have a vague idea about it, right? Because most of us do fall under this uh, blood group system. So you know people could be a uh, blood group A, blood group B, AB or O. It could be positive or negative based on what type of antigens are present on our RBC. We know, at, I, I'm sure we know this much about the uh, blood grouping system, ABO blood grouping system. So what happened was at the beginning of 20th century, an Austrian scientist named Karl Lenstainer observed that when, uh, you know, RBCs, when the blood in the blood transfusion in some individuals RBCs were getting agglutinated the blood transfusion was not always successful it resulted in agglutination in some cases so he observed the pattern of this agglutination and that caused the discovery of different blood groups okay based on the pattern of agglutination he divided different blood groups and that resulted in the discovery of first blood group system and that is our ABO blood grouping system. So what he observed was when uh, you know blood is mixed when two individuals blood is mixed there was a reaction and that was because there was presence of certain antigens on our blood cells and there was presence of certain antibodies in the serum and now we know this that uh, you know if I am I am blood group B positive so I will have antibody against blood group A right so that reaction the agglutination is because there is presence of antigens on RBC and present of antibodies in serum all this is going to be clear just in a while so based on this what antigens he observed he observed two antigens and because it was discovered first as simple as that it was named antigen A and antigen B okay so individuals who contain antigen A on their RBC were classified as blood group A there were individuals who had antigen B on their RBC they were classified as blood group B there were even individuals who had both A and B on their RBC so obviously they were classified as blood group AB now this was a later on blood group O where it was found that uh, there are certain individuals who have neither of A nor B on their RBC. So those uh, individuals were classified as blood group O. And this blood group O was from a German word. One means uh, without. All right. So that means individuals without A and B antigen were classified as blood group O. So now we have understood this, uh, you know, based on the antigen present on RBC, individuals are classified as A, B, A, B or O. Now what are these antigens? How do they look like? So let's have a look at the antigens. So these antigens A, B or O that we are talking about are nothing but sugars present on the cell membrane of RBC. Okay. So on the RBC cell membrane there is this sugar moiety that is present and this particular you know there is a base unit called H substance or H antigen that is nothing but glucose, galactose and acetyl glucose amine again galactose with fucose. This particular sugar moiety will be attached to all of our RBCs all of our uh, you know whether you are a b a b or o you will have this base unit on your rbc except uh, if you belong to some other blood group or you have a bombay phenotype we'll come back to that later so all of us the rbc would have a base unit of or what is called H substance or H antigen and that is the base unit of glucose galactose and acetyl glucosamine galactose with fucose. Now to this base unit there are two sugars that could be added based on what genes 
uh, we would have let's say for example i am blood group a i would have a gene that codes for a specific enzyme that would transfer the n acetyl galactose amine to this base unit now this becomes my antigen a and if i have this antigen on my rbc i am going to be blood group a individual if i have gene that codes for an enzyme that transfers galactose to this base unit i am going to have a blood group b so this becomes antigen b you know whether you are a or b would depend on what uh, sugar is added to your h substance if you don't have this a or b only if you have this h substance or h antigen on your rbc that means that person is classified as blood group o and this is what is o antigen without a or b and when we say a or b it is just a matter of sugar that is added to this o antigen or h antigen let's not call it o antigen let's call it h antigen so you have a base unit which is same for all of us if we belong to ab or blood grouping whether we are a b ab or o we have a same base unit that is what we call h antigen or h substance and you know that is what is the only thing present for blood group o individual if we are uh, having gene a that codes for a specific enzyme which can transfer n acetyl galactosamine person would be having a antigen on their rbc and if there is an enzyme that transfers galactose to this h antigen person would be classified as b antigen it's just a one sugar uh, that is uh, you know resulting into a antigen or b antigen if a person is ab that means they have both of these antigens pr present on their rbc now if you remember we were talking about bombay blood group or bombay phenotype where we had seen that uh, individuals who have a homozygous uh, there there would be a mutation where they'll be homozygous for this h allele so there are uh, homozygous alleles h h where they cannot produce this h antigen now you understood this h antigen is actually acting as a base unit for your antigen a or antigen b right if there is no h antigen even though you have gene a or gene b coding for a specific enzyme you cannot transfer these sugars because you don't have the platform on which you can transfer these sugars right you don't have h substance you cannot transfer any of the sugar to your rbc so such individuals cannot produce antigen a or b even if they have antigens for that so you can imagine for these uh, individuals they would have antibodies against uh, a and b of course but in addition to that they will also have antibodies against this h antigen right because they don't know this h antigen so they will also produce antibodies against this h antigen so you know sometimes what happens uh, for Bom bombay blood group if you just simply do the agglutination test they are tend to be classified as blood group o because they are going to agglutinate with uh, antibodies a and b both but they will also have antibodies against antigen h which is very very uh, you know uh, dangerous because if they should be having transfusion only with bombay uh, phenotype of bombay blood group because they carry an antibodies against all three antigens now if you want more in detail about this bombay phenotype we have talked about this i will put the link on the uh, screen you can just have a look it's very interesting to understand but just for the information for bombay phenotype they don't even have h antigen so even if the person has a gene that would you know cause a gene for a or b antigen they will not be able to transfer this sugar and as a result they will not produce this antigen so they will have antibody against a b and h all three so that's all about the antigens uh, of abo blood grouping system now one interesting fact if you know uh, we always say that whatever blood group we are we will have antibody against the other blood group so if i am blood group uh, b positive in my serum i already have anti a antibodies right and 
it's interesting to understand how I already have these antibodies if if I have not been given this blood group before in my life if I'm not exposed to this uh, blood group A how do I have this antibodies already present in my blood and this is the case for all ABO individuals so you know let's say for example blood group A would have anti B antibodies in their serum blood group B individual will have anti A antibodies if a person is AB that means it knows both A and B so they will have no antibodies uh, against this uh, A or B if the person is blood group O that means they will have antibodies against A and B both how does that happen that is because the antibodies of this ABO is actually naturally formed in our body and that is because these antigens are sugar as I said and these sugars that we saw are actually very identical to the sugars that we find in nature like uh, in food or in microorganism we have very very similar sugars present so when we are born at very early age we'll be taking you know we'll be coming in contact with a lot of microorganisms as we go on we take a lot of food you know so we are coming or we are encountering uh, these identical sugars in food and microorganism naturally we are coming in contact with these sugars and whatever missing sugar that we are coming in contact what I mean is if I am blood group B when I come in contact with identical sugar to antigen A I am going to make antibodies against antigen A if an individual is blood group A and when that individual comes in contact with identical sugar to antigen B they will form anti B antibodies right I am sure it is simple enough to understand so ABO antibodies are actually naturally formed in our body because they these sugars are very identical to the sugars that are found in nature so when we come in contact with such identical missing sugars in food or microorganisms we make antibodies in our serum so we always would have antibodies against whatever uh, blood group we are not if I'm blood group B I have antibodies against blood group A so that's all about the AB or blood grouping now you know if you want more detail about this which antigen has what antibody and which uh, blood group can take what blood group or who is a universal recipient or donor all that also again we have talked uh, much in detail in some other videos so I will put the link on the screen if you want you can just have a look there also it's again very interesting now let's move on to RH blood group so this RH blood group we know that you know we say positive or negative that is nothing but we are referring to the presence of one antigen that is you know extra antigen other than this A and B and that is antigen D on RBC there is one more antigen that is present or absent on RBC and based on that we are classified as positive or negative and that antigen is antigen D now ABO antigen we saw were sugars okay these antigens are nothing but the sugars present on RBC when it comes to RH antigen that antigen D is protein it's a sequence of amino acid present on the membrane of RBC that is the difference okay antigen D is nothing but a protein or amino acid sequence that is present on RBC and it is called RH because it is named after rhesus monkey in which first it was discovered okay it was named by mistake there's whole another story behind it but it is RH because it was first discovered in rhesus monkey and it is second most important blood group after ABO because uh, if you remember we talked about uh, hemolytic disease of the newborn where if a mother is RH negative and a father is RH positive and the fetus is RH positive in the first pregnancy there will be no problem but in the second pregnancy uh, the, the fetus can be attacked by the immune system of the uh, mother so it is very very important to know your RH, whether you are RH positive or negative because it has a lot of medical implications so it is very important to understand and once again hemolytic disease of the newborn or uh, RH incompatibility we have talked about it I'll, I'll put the link on the screen in case you want to have a look so as I said it is the antigen D that is present on RBC that is what we call the RH antigen 
So if a person has this antigen D on the RBC, the person is classified as RH positive. If it is not there, if the person does not have this antigen D on the RBC, simple enough to understand, person is classified as RH negative. So other than A, B and O, O is our H substance. There is also this antigen D that could be present on the RBC. Based on whatever it is, we will classify it as you know, A positive, A negative, B positive, B negative and so on. So now when it comes to the antibodies, we saw that ABO antibodies are always present in our serum. It is naturally present, right? But in case of RH, the antibodies are not produced naturally. So that means if a person is RH negative, will not have anti-RH antibody in their blood naturally. Okay? If you take blood of B negative person, B negative individual, they will have antibodies against antigen A, but they will not have anti-RH antibody. That means this is naturally present, but this is not naturally present. RH antibodies are only induced or you know the production is stimulated only when they encounter this RH antigen all right only when a person who is RH negative encounters RH uh, antigen they will produce the antibodies against RH antigen that's why you know in case of hemolytic disease of newborn the first pregnancy even though the fetus is positive and mother is negative at first pregnancy the fetus is not attacked at the time of delivery when there is a mixing of blood and fetal blood is you know mixed with mother's blood at that time the immune system of mother produces antibodies against this RH antigen and in the next pregnancy the fetus is attacked if it is not being taken care the fetus will be attacked because now mother's antibody or the immune system is exposed to RH antigen okay so when it comes to RH antibodies remember they are not naturally produced only when RH negative person comes in contacts with RH antigen they will produce the antibodies against it so that's all about RH blood grouping system so that's all for now that's all about ABO and RH blood group I hope this video was helpful do subscribe to the channel for new video every week and I will see you next time until then keep learning